Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage. And I'm Dennis, the Buddy Meister. And depending on when you're watching this, we wish you a great New Year's Eve, a great New Year's Day, or just a great New Year. A few months ago we promised you a question and answer video and today we are finally delivering on that promise. First of all, thank you so much for all your questions. We hope we didn't miss anything. Many of you even posted multiple questions and there are just a few that we left off so that the video won't be too long. So without further ado, let's get started. What do you say in the intro? Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage. And I'm Dennis, the Buddy Meister. Servus Freunde means hello friends or hello fellas. What would be the first film you would recommend to someone who hasn't watched any Indian film before? I think that very much depends on the person I'm recommending it to. It's good to know at least some about their taste in movies or if they are big into certain genres. For example, if he or she likes horror, I would recommend Tumpad. If they are into classics, I would certainly recommend watching Satya Jidrai's Pater Panchali. And for the big new Masala mainstream spectacle, I would pick Bahubali. How long have you guys been friends? And how did you meet? I think we know each other since 2007, although we only became friends last year. Just kidding. Yeah. We met each other through a mutual friend and we quickly formed a little band of fellow movie nerds. Because we all studied film at the University of Vienna and we all shared the same passion and nerdiness for cinema. What's the writing process like for your reviews? And in the ones that both of you do together, do you write together or separately and then put them together? For me, the writing process is by far the hardest aspect in the whole production of a video. But it's also depending a little bit on the movie. There are some where I instantly have almost the entire review in my head or at least all the aspects I want to focus on. And then there are some where I have no clue where to begin and the text only comes together as I'm trying to sort my thoughts out. I always do a little bit of research after I've seen a film. Usually I go through all the IMDb trivia and look up some Wikipedia just to see if there might be some interesting things I maybe missed. The structure of my reviews comes rather naturally and I'm just trying to give it a little through line, meaning I don't want to be extremely structured where I always talk about the same aspects in the same order because each movie is different and I want to keep it organic. But I try to lead from one aspect to another so that hopefully there is some flow to the review. I also try to begin with something positive even if I didn't end up liking a film as a whole. For our joint reviews we almost always take our notes separately because most of the time we watch the movie separately. Then we combine our notes, I put everything into shape and mold the script out of it. Which I then go through, adapt some stuff and add to it as well. How do you get the pronunciations correct of Indian movies and actors? That's a question for you. My pronunciations kinda suck. You're getting better at it with every review. Anyway, I think I just have a good ear for words and especially names. Then I repeat and learn them, but sometimes I just research. But for the record, I don't think I get all the pronunciations right. Who is the best Indian actor according to you? Have we seen enough Indian movies to really be able to answer this one appropriately? It is a difficult question, because we especially haven't seen enough older movies. But if I have to give an answer now, I would maybe say... Mm, Navasudin? Yeah, probably. What are your favorite video games that feel like movies? Also, what are your favorite video games in general? I always loved the first Max Payne game, which eventually became a terrible movie. Other than that, I think the Gears of War and the Halo franchise felt very much like movies when I played them. Especially Halo 3, that one actually is also one of my favorite video games in general. Others are Final Fantasy VIII and Mario Kart Double Dash. I'm a classic console player. Look, here's the thing with video games and me. Film aside, they are easily my second biggest passion in life and I've spent countless of hours playing video games ever since I was a little kid. But I'm someone who looks for completely different things when I'm approaching a film or a video game. And I'm someone who usually, I mean there are exceptions, couldn't care less for stories in video games or that they feel cinematic. I'm all about pure gameplay. I'm not into cutscenes, not into quick time events and not into spending much time on story or characters. When I play a game I'm looking for that gameplay and I want to be immersed into that aspect. I know this is a complex topic but let's leave it at that. It's not saying that I can't appreciate other elements like story and characters as well, but it's not what I'm looking for in the first place. Some of my favorite video games are Half-Life, Rollercoaster Tycoon, Grand Theft Auto, Quake, Super Mario Galaxy, Hollow Knight, Worms, Bioshock, Warcraft 3 and a lot more. Have you tried Indian food? Yes we have. There are a few good Indian places here in Vienna and from time to time we order some as well. 
Since I try to really not eat as much meat, my regular go-to meal is chana masala. I love all kinds of curry dishes with a good naan or papadam. Which Indian film industry do you think produces the best films? I think our fans like to test us. Seems like it, but we will not fall into that trap. Who produces the best films? I can't answer that, but I can tell you which industry left the biggest impression on me or us. And that's certainly the Malayalam industry. Definitely. I think Malayalam movies presented the first big difference for us in contrast to those huge masala movies. And I think now we are able to tell if a movie is a Malayalam movie or not. That might also be possible for other industries, but Malayalam is a sure bet by now. How do you do your research for the films? IMDb, Wikipedia, but also just a simple Google search. We try to go beyond the surface of information, especially when it's a movie about politics or real-life people or if it's based on a play or a book. Are long reviews coming back? Unfortunately, it's not planned to bring them back right now because we had so many problems with YouTube's copyright policy. Those three reviews took forever to make and to see them get blocked is really discouraging. And since they take so long to produce, we also can't really afford all the time and effort that went into them with both of us working full-time jobs. A normal review takes about five hours to produce. The time to watch the movie is not included. Some take a little bit less, some take a little bit more. But those three Buddy Loves episodes easily took about 50 to 80 hours each. So you can do the math on how many normal reviews we could put out in that time. We really love doing those and we are kind of proud as well. But right now it's not possible. Do Indian films get released regularly in Vienna or is it just the big films? There is one specific cinema here in Vienna that usually shows at least two or three new Indian movies each month. But unfortunately though, you can never really count on it being the most anticipated movies. Sometimes it feels rather random what they show and what not. We try to keep up to date with their schedule because so far we were lucky to see some real gems on the big screen. What started your journey into global cinema? Well, where to start? I think for us in Europe it's a little bit different than for example an American, because yes, we overwhelmingly grew up with movies from Hollywood, but there were also always films from other countries, be it France, England, Italy and of course Germany as well. How do you get around cultural barriers when it comes to understanding global cinema? No matter from what country a movie is, usually most storytelling techniques are pretty similar, so it's easy to connect. At the end of the day you have your characters who have their goals or problems and conflicts. Of course, those can be a little bit more foreign to us at first, but we always do some research so we have a basic idea about the content. Sometimes if we really are struggling, we pause a film and look up some Wikipedia. Who are your favorite directors and actors, both overall and Indian? Overall I would say Martin Scorsese, Peter Weir, Sergio Leone, Adam McKay. And when it comes to Indian I have to say S.S. Rajamuli, Lijo Yos Peliseri, Anurag Kashyap and Mani Ratnam. Certainly a question I could give you dozens of names, but I try to keep it short. I always name Frank Capra, Billy Wilder and Alfred Hitchcock. I also really adore Paul Thomas Anderson, Denis Villeneuve, Park Chan-wook, John Woo, Michael Cortese, Steven Spielberg and a lot more. From India I have to name Satya Jit Rai, Anand Gandhi and Nagraj Manjula. When it comes to actors and actresses, my favorites are Will Ferrell, of course Robert De Niro, Gene Hackman, Peter Sellers, Pierre Richard, Natalie Portman is great and Francis McDormand. Indian actors and actresses I like are Vijay Setupati, Nawazuddin Zidiki, Anthony Varghese, Ali Abad, Kajal Agarwal and Sharada Srinath. My two favorite actors of all time are Jimmy Stewart and Nicolas Cage. Hmm, Jimmy Cage? I also like Marilyn Monroe, Scarlett Johansson, Harrison Ford, Subin Shahir, Madhavi Mukherjee, Al Pacino, Kurt Russell, Mel Gibson and how about another classic Hollywood legend, Humphrey Bogart. What is your favorite genre? I don't think I have one, but if I have to choose, it's probably comedy. Likewise, I don't have one particular genre that's my absolute favorite, but I definitely have genres I gravitate towards to more than others. And those are war movies and film noir. What was your first Indian movie? What was the experience like? I think the first Indian movie that I watched was Mother India at the university during a lecture about Bollywood. The first one I saw in a cinema was Joda Akbar at a press screening. I guess both experiences were kinda mind opening because it simply was something new. I think the first Indian movie that I really watched with full attention from beginning to end was the first Bahubali after someone has recommended it to me here on the channel and the experience was really something else. I totally fell in love with SS Rajamudi's style of filmmaking and I often kid that there's a time before Bahubali for me and a time after Bahubali. Is any one of you married? No. No. 
What stops you from doing trailer reactions? Well, honestly, we think trailer reactions are kind of bland and uninteresting, and we think almost all trailer reactions you find on YouTube are very over the top and unnatural. If you want to see me react to a trailer, this would be it. For two minutes. I mean, we get the appeal and I think no one can say he never watched a trailer reaction before. But I think for me a big factor is also that I would feel as if I just became another part of the marketing machinery of those big mainstream blockbusters. Companies put out these trailers which are just a marketing instrument. I mean trailers are often little pieces of art themselves, but they also say very little about the actual finished film. It's possible to make a great trailer for a terrible movie, so doing trailer reactions reactions just feels wrong to us. Do you think budget is a hindrance in creativity? I think it works both ways. Of course you have to make some adjustments and compromises if you don't have the biggest budget, but on the other side many of the most wonderful ideas, ways to tell certain stories or film specific scenes are as great as they are because people had to get creative because of budgetary reasons. I agree, but I also think that you maybe had to be more creative when the use of CGI wasn't a thing. Even with a bigger budget, you kinda had to find ways to create certain things that are probably a lot easier to create on a computer, even if that still requires creativity and a lot of craftsmanship. What is your dream about your life? What should I say? Continue as it is and drop dead in like 50 years or so. So you're the cynical master now? But honestly, just make the best of it. Really heavy questions we got, what he said. What is Buddy Meister's personal list of best Indian movies so far? Okay, so this is my list from July, when we made our top 10 video. 10 Angamali Diaries, 9 Iobinte Pushtakam, 8 Tondi Mutalum Drixaxium, 7 Andadun, 6 Kila, 5 Anand, 4 Iga, 3 Bahubali The Conclusion, 2 The Apu Trilogy, and number 1 Tumbat. Any plans on directing a movie in the future? Absolutely not. Honestly, making a full feature film seems like the biggest pain in the ass I can imagine. It's such a big undertaking and not really the kind of work that I feel comfortable with and that gives me much joy. Yeah, it's a no for me as well. Back in the days, of course, as a film enthusiast, it's always a cool idea and dream to someday make a movie yourself. But as years go by and you also learn what you really want to do in life or feel good at, it faded away. Can you tell whether a film is Bollywood, Tollywood, etc. without actually knowing its language? After seeing up to 150 movies, I guess I believe myself to be able to distinguish between Hindi, Tamil and Malayalam. The other languages are more difficult at the moment, so I guess it's a yes. Definite no for me. Any plans to review online series like Netflix or Amazon Prime? I only watch very little series, mostly because of time and so it's not really planned for the future. I actually watch a lot of TV, but it's nice to watch something you don't have to make a review for. Has the Buddy Meister become the Bollywood Maestro? Absolutely not. What's your favorite movie watching experience? It's actually not that easy to pick one specific movie watching experience. I guess we must have seen hundreds of movies together by now after all those years. A definite highlight each year was the Far East Film Festival which is held in Italy and which we attended like five years in a row. We've seen a lot of really crazy and memorable Asian movies there and just the exceptional situation to go to the cinema together for a whole week and watch like three to five movies in a row each day is really something. I've seen a few Indian movie review channels and almost all of them have a problem with song and dance sequences being used in the movie, but you guys seem to enjoy it. Why is that? Well, all the channels that I know of haven't got any problems with song and dance sequences. And if somebody really has a problem, then I have to ask, do they get and understand Indian cinema? To have a general problem with song and dance sequences really is kinda wacky if you like Indian cinema. Of course, not every Indian movie industry features sad sequences, but it's more or less mutually exclusive to love Indian cinema and to hate song and dances. But of course, song and dances in itself can be bad, be it because of superstitious lyrics, bland melodies or the way they are integrated in a movie. If those things are fine, I love them. Me too. I love the rhythms, I love the energy. Of course it's also personal taste and the movies you grew up with. I also like musicals from other countries and really applaud the talent on display. Being able to sing and dance is something great and to see people who are good at it and when it's done in a great fashion in a movie is just marvelous. What is your perfect movie? The good, the bad and the ugly and the fugitive.
The Empire Strikes Back, Rear Window, The Apartment, Princess Mononoke and a few more. Films in which each element is just wonderful and all the components come together in this magical way. Many people might not realize how incredibly difficult it is to make even a decent enough movie. There are so many factors at work, so many people involved and when it all comes together you catch lightning in a bottle. How has the overall experience been? So far it has been a long and exciting journey into Indian cinema and I think we are both really happy that we took the challenge. For sure, sometimes it can be a little bit stressful because of all those recommendations and also the expectations that you guys put in us, but there have been so many wonderful films and it's also very rewarding to see all your feedback on the channel and to hear you say that you like the reviews and want us to do more. It has also been quite the unexpected turn for the channel, because with all the other movies that I review, which are mostly coming from Hollywood, it's more like I'm the expert, but with Indian cinema it's almost the opposite, with you leading our way and we have to do a lot of homework. It has been also a great way to broaden our horizon, because to be completely honest, until we did this, India, its culture, its history and also its conflicts and recent situation haven't really been on our radar and it's always a good thing to learn more about other people and see different perspectives. If you are going to make an Indian film, what language would it be in, what genre and who will be some of the actors you would want in it? I really don't care about the language because we don't understand it anyway. Regarding the genre I would definitely go with a gritty gangster epic and cast Vijay Setupati, Navazuddin Siddiqui and probably Kajal Agarwal or Shraddha Sirnyat. I absolutely need Subin Shahir in my movie, as well as Rajkumar Rao, Sudeep, Fahad Fazil, Pavati, Samantha Rood Prabhu, Radhika Abde, Priyanka Chopra and Tabu. And I would go for a big masala spectacle. I can totally see that movie. Amongst the movies you have seen, which is the best? Indian movies or in general? I guess it's Indian. Well, Apur Santar and Tumbat are my favorites to date. For me it's The Big City and Perambu. What are the languages that you can understand? Not much actually. German and English. Same for me, maybe just a tiny little bit of French since I had it for two years back at school. But I really sucked at it. Pardon my French. If you have to choose between Vijay Setupati and Fahad Fazil on the basis of acting, who would you pick? Both are definitely among our favorite Indian actors, but if we really have to choose, I think we both would go with Vijay because he seems more versatile and his face and acting style are just a little bit more crazy and interesting. Why don't you have more subscribers? I wonder myself. Jimmy, your turn. Why? Well, as I often say, YouTube is a really hard place. Most people only see the big channels and wonder why others don't get the same recognition. But it's not just about the quality of content. There are a lot of different factors at play and not the smallest among them is simply luck and doing the right stuff at the right time. When I started on YouTube there were already so many other channels that reviewed movies, so it's extra hard to get a following, even a little one. I'm quite happy how far we got by now, but of course I hope and wish that we keep on building and who knows, maybe we will cross the 100k mark as well. Maybe tomorrow! Maybe not. Any plans on coming to India? And if you come, what would be your favorite places to be? I would love to go to India in the future, but so far I have really no idea what places to visit. Of course Kerala would be very high on my list after all the beautiful depictions we saw in many different movies. But India is just such a big country, so where to start? Kerala, of course. The beautiful coast of Cochin would be an option. But of course you can't go to India without visiting a big city like Mumbai. Although I'm afraid I would be completely overwhelmed. But yeah, sometime I would love to visit India. What do you feel when you watch a movie which ends in a depressing way? I think it completely depends on the movie and its story, but I tend to really enjoy watching sad films that tackle serious issues, films that make you think, look at stuff from a different perspective or just really invest in different people's lives, because that's one of the marvels of cinema or stories in general. I just want to laugh and have a good time. Just kidding. I think the ending of a film has to fit the story. Oftentimes happy endings tend to be more artificial and cliché, but when I'm in the right mood it's nice. What are 10 of your favorite animated films of all time? 10 is a bit much, but I can tell you my favorite 4. The Jungle Book, The Land Before Time, The Twelve Tasks of Asterix and Monsters University. 
Without any particular order and just off the top of my head, I would say Akira, Nauschka, Princess Mononoke, Castle in the Sky, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, The Rescuers Down Under, Toy Story, The Lego Movie, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Bambi and a lot more. In general, I'm a big admirer of animation. Do you act? Of course! Haven't you seen our super professional review openings? But apart from that, no, not at all. I would be the worst actor, as you've seen in set review openings. Who comes up with the ideas for the skits? Most of the time, Dennis comes up with the skits, but it's a joint effort with the other person trying to improve on what's there and together we create the most fun intro possible for you guys. Or not. Are there any movies that one of you loves that the other despises? A recent example would maybe be English Winglish, which I really enjoyed a lot. And me, not so much. An older one, but I guess I wouldn't like it as much today as I did back then, is the Will Smith masterpiece 7 pounds. Yeah, despise is a hard word. And normally, like you probably know from our reviews, we are kind of on the same page more often than not. Quite boring, I know. Do you guys feel that you meant to have more views and subscribers than this? And what is your plan with this channel? With all the hard work and effort we put in our reviews, yeah, it would be great to get more views and subscribers. YouTube is really a difficult and also unfair place, but that's life. My or our plan is of course to grow bigger and reach more people, share our thoughts about great or not so great movies, because it's always really rewarding to see comments of people who watched something after he or she saw our recommendation. The bigger plan would of course be to reach a level where it at least pays off a small amount of money, because let's be honest, apart from all the communication with our subscribers and the exploration of new films, it would also be motivating to get at least a little bit payoff for all the hours we put into making these videos. Is there a movie which inspired you a lot? It might be a strange choice, but a movie that really left an impression was V for Vendetta. I still remember the first time I watched it, how passionate I was to change the whole system. Of course I didn't. Good choice. A movie that comes to mind for me is the 2003 Korean masterpiece Old Boy. I saw it in a very crucial time of my life and it was one of the films that made me decide to study film in the first place. Other movies which might be more in the vein of those inspirational movies are Dead Poet Society, It's a Wonderful Life, To Kill a Mockingbird, Rocky or The Shawshank Redemption. An Indian film that just recently left a lasting impression was actually Ship of Theseus. Or Race 3. What is a film you would have loved to be on set as an extra? Well, I guess I would have loved to be an extra on any movie that's directed by any one of my favorite directors. Goodfellas by Scorsese would have been cool, but also Inglorious Bastards by Tarantino, two of my favorite movies. I think being an extra on the very first Star Wars would have been an amazing experience. And after I've just fallen in love with The Dark Crystal, I guess that would also be a very great pick for me. Do you have difficulties in understanding regional movies of different languages? How do you deal with the cultural barriers in them? I guess the language doesn't really matter, because we watch all of the movies with subtitles anyway, so there isn't really a difficulty in understanding them. But some languages are definitely faster than others, so sometimes the subtitles can't keep up and that can be a problem for us. Yeah, of course there are always cultural aspects we are not familiar with. But usually the language of cinema is pretty universal and since we are both avid lovers of film, we are also open to every kind of cinema. And if there's really something we don't get, we look it up and while we might not get as affected by certain things, I would say we mostly get it. How did the idea of both of you collaborating on Indian movie reviews come about? Good question and I actually don't remember the exact details, but I think after I saw Bahubali I pitched you the idea for the Buddy Loves Bollywood or Tollywood format and we just did that. And when I started doing reviews of Indian movies there came a point where I decided to do it regularly and again I think I just asked you if you were interested to join me. How did your interest in Indian cinema start? I always had this general interest in Indian cinema. I think that originated from back when Bollywood movies were shown on German television and Shah Rukh Khan became this big thing. So I always wanted to know why these movies were like they were. Why so long? Why so many genres packed in one movie? Why all the colors? Why the songs and dances of course? Like I said, for me it began with the recommendation of Bahubali. But strangely enough I thought for years that Indian cinema 
and with that I had mainly big mainstream Indian cinema in mind, would be something that might appeal to me very much, with all those emotions being displayed, lush decorations, big song and dance numbers. But somehow I never got around to really give it a try before. Imagine you guys get to marry a character from any film released until now. Which character, from which film and why? My god, that is a tough question. Indian film or any film ever? I guess from any film ever, and yeah, really tough question. I think you would really have to look very carefully at all the different characters. I mean, there have definitely been a lot of female characters through the years that I have somewhat of a crush on, at least for the duration of the movie. But I think I never thought to myself, I would love to marry that person. What is the best cinema for you, Hollywood or Bollywood? To be honest, questions like that are always a bit silly to me. Both can be great. And both can suck. Exactly. Of course, personally, I have seen at least 10 times more films from Hollywood than I've seen from Bollywood. I was basically raised on Hollywood movies and then I even studied them in college. So they will always have a very special place in my heart. While we just recently started to delve into Indian cinema and as a part of that into Bollywood. What are the five best decades for cinema? I think each decade has its fair share of great films, and also some decades have greater movies from certain countries than others. But as a big fan of classic Hollywood, I personally would go with the 30s, 40s, 50s, and also, since I grew up with it the most, the 80s. I can give you my favorite three decades. 70s, 80s, and 90s. What do you think of Gremlins? Good movie, but I haven't seen it for a long time. I actually saw it in a theater a few years ago and it definitely holds up. It was a favorite of mine when I grew up and it's still a favorite today. Wonderful creature effects, cozy but gruesome small town Christmas setting and of course one of the cutest movie characters of all time, Gizmo. How many countries have you been to? Of course Germany and Austria, France, Italy, Denmark, Poland, Slovakia, Spain, the Czech Republic and my biggest and most adventurous trip so far was to Japan. I was in Austria, Germany, Switzerland, Poland, Czech Republic, Italy, France, Hungary, Slovakia and Turkey. How many times did people say it's a Tamil or Malayala movie rather than Bollywood? Well, our fans corrected us more than once when we called Bahubali a Bollywood movie instead of a Tollywood movie. But I think after that we didn't make any more mistakes, did we? I don't think so. As you're now exposed to world cinema, compared to Hollywood, how much would you rate Indian, Korean and Spanish movies? I don't think I'm able to make a ranking for that. You said it before and it's the same with me. I mainly grew up with Hollywood movies, but I also saw a lot of British and French comedies. About 10 to 15 years ago, I was totally into Asian cinema, Korean or Japanese. And now I love Indian cinema as well. So I don't know, I just want to watch a good movie. I don't care where it's from. But I guess Spanish cinema would be in last place. Damn, where does that strong sentiment against Spanish cinema come from? I don't think I even know that many Spanish movies, but for the wonderful films by Pedro Almodovar alone, it has to be worth something. Well, it wasn't a question. Uh, okay, got it. But yeah, it's the same with me. It's all about good movies, no matter what country they are from. What are your thoughts about India? I'd love to go there sometime in the future, be it to a big city like Mumbai or Chennai or Bangalore or to a small village somewhere in Kerala. But I'm also a bit intimidated by the size of those bigger cities, so if I ever travel over there it certainly needs good and proper planning. I think as with most countries there are great things about India and there are very troublesome as well. I still find it very hard to even imagine just how big India is. It's the biggest democracy on the planet, just going by the size of its population. I mean, almost 1.4 billion people, just think about that. Absolutely, and there are a lot of problems. But I also always associate great food and very rich culture with India. Which Indian movie disappointed you the most? For all the praise that it got, I was rather disappointed in Niraj Pandey's baby. Yeah, but Sanju has to take the top spot here. Well, that's true. We were really disappointed when we came out of the cinema, because we both liked Three Idiots and PK, and I didn't think that Rajkumar Hirani could make such a lame movie. How many takes does it usually take when you guys film the funny intros, and who laughs more while filming them? That of course depends on how stupid the intro is. And on how much stuff we have to memorize, but in general, I believe we need three to five takes and we take turns when it comes to who laughs more. I think our intro for Anand is the record-breaking number one with 17 takes. Just watch the last two minutes of that review and see for yourself.
What do you think about Indian cinema, as surely the amount of good movies to you is pretty low relative to the total numbers of Indian movies? Well, I think it's safe to say that we get only a very brief glimpse of Indian cinema in general, and that our perception is of course distorted, since we try to watch only the highlights. But that's something we could say about many other cinema nations as well. There are so many American movies made each year that would never even be released here or even heard about. And like you said earlier, to make a good movie is a little miracle in itself. So as long as there are also some great movies, you could say that a country is leaving its mark on world cinema. Do you think Lijo Yost Pelisseri is one, if not the best Malayalam director? He's certainly one of the best and most interesting at the moment. We still have very limited knowledge when it comes to Indian cinema, especially when it comes to directors of a certain industry, but we've seen a few movies by Pelisseri, so yes, he's definitely one of the best. You need a lot of time and research to make these videos. With 10k plus subscriptions, maybe you both can get a beer in the weekends with the revenue. So what motivates you to do this without looking for other means like trailer reactions etc. to increase the subs? It's fun and it keeps the creative mind going. And yeah, that one beer each weekend is about right. It's definitely a hustle, but I think it's important that you chase something for yourself, something you are passionate about. In most cases, it might not work out as well as you hope, but at least you tried something. We've been doing this for a long time now, and of course I hoped we would be at more subscribers and views, but you can never predict. We did actually think about doing trailer reactions more than once, but we always come to the realization that we simply don't like doing it. How do you explain an Indian movie to a beginner? I think it completely depends on the movie, because after all there's no such uniform thing as an Indian movie. But I guess I would advise what I always advise whenever you are trying something outside your usual stuff. Try to keep an open mind. And of course, that there might be some songs and maybe even dances in there as well. What's your favorite band? Pink Floyd. A man of few words. It always comes and goes in phases for me. There's definitely not that one band that I would follow until the end of time. But two of my favorites are the German bands or formations, the Totenhosen and KZ. Do you guys make any money on YouTube? The answer is yes and no. Yes, because the channel earned about $560 ad revenue in 2019, which amounts to about $1.50 a day. But no, because that's really nothing at all if you consider the hours of work that go into it. And if you take away the costs for equipment, streaming services and cinema admissions, we are about even I guess. But we will launch a Patreon account at the beginning of 2020, where you will be able to support us more if you like and also get some nice extra features. We will make a video about it soon and go into all the details. So that's it for today. We hope we answered all your questions to your satisfaction. And until next time you can hit me up on Twitter, Instagram and Letterboxd simply at the Jimmy Cage. And you can hit me up on Twitter at the Bodymeister. And as always, if you enjoyed this episode, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like, and make sure you hit that bell for all we have to tell.